This week on New Brew Thursday, Victory Brewing Company, a very passionate craft beer advocate, and a very special announcement. Very special. We are going to be appearing at Whole Foods Market in Tustin, California. We're going to be there May 15th with Dr. Bill from Stone Brewing Company, Master Pairings, New Brew Thursday, as well as with Annette Barron, who is the creator, director, producer of the documentary Beer Wars. She's going to be there signing DVDs, possibly having them for sale, and you get to meet her. Um, Dr. Bill's going to be pairing about five beers, I think, with five different cheeses, so that's going to be pretty cool. It's free to get in. Again, it's May 15th, 11 to 4 p.m., be there. Okay, now for this week's episode. We're doing things a little bit different this week by giving you the Beer Wars Craft Beer Advocate segment first and then moving straight into the show, which we filmed with Bill Kobaleski from Victory Brewing Company. We had an awesome time, had some great beer, and we hope you enjoy. This week's Craft Beer Advocate is Renee from Ohio. She writes in, My craft beer epiphany came slowly and unexpectedly. I never had intentions of discovering beer for myself, but was simply trying to cultivate a new interest for my husband. At 35, he had lived in the same house, worked at the same job, and had been married to the same woman for over a dozen years. He needed something to change in his life. He needed a new passion. And I set out to help him find it. Bill had always enjoyed beer. However, it was never something we researched or sought out. He'd buy craft beer as often as he would macro beer. I began to research and learn about the latest releases and festivals. I couldn't believe how much was out there. We attended a couple of tastings and events, and little by little a passion was born. We met brewers and talked about the process. We toured breweries and learned about the delicate balance it all is. We made friends with craft beer fans in our community. Wonderful people that would never have, we would never have met if it had not been for this joint interest. And along the way, I discovered I like stouts and porters from craft breweries. In fact, I outright love quite a few of them. So, in the end, all is well. Boredom is never a problem because there's always some special tapping or event. We hold tastings at home and make trips to nearby breweries. We feel good about the product that we consume because we've had a meaningful conversation with the brewer and know that he or she shares our passion. Our lives are fuller than ever because of the wonderful friends we've made along the way. Much in our lives is still the same. It's now been closer to 15 years that we've lived in the same house and Bill has worked in the same job and has the same wife. However, we no longer buy domestic six packs or even European imports. We're too busy trying to keep up with all the wonderful craft brewer releases. I'm drinking right along with Bill. Great letter, Renee, and thanks for writing in. Tell us your craft beer advocacy story at advocate at newbrewthursday.com or post a video of yourself online telling your story and we'll include it in our show. It's New Brew Thursday. Woo! <laughs> and we're here at uh, Victory Brewing with Bill Kobaleski. Well, that's right? correct. Got it. This place rocks. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to be here because I'm always here. I'm happy to see you guys, though, more, yeah. more yeah, well, importantly. For us. We're in uh, Downingstown? Downingtown. Beautiful Downingtown. Yeah, this is an awesome area. We drove up from uh, Milton, Delaware, and drove through some like extremely beautiful areas. Yeah, I used but to, come down, to come down to Philadelphia a lot as a kid, but I never really uh, took in a lot of the scenery. And down here, it's just it's gorgeous down here. Well, this is a really interest, like interesting area because the, the main line of Philadelphia, you know, where where the wealthy summer homes and such were built. That peters out about 10 miles east of us and about 10 miles west of where we are, or maybe even closer, uh, it's all farming. A lot of Amish and Mennonite farming. So, you know, Downingtown is sort of right in that that zone where right. anything could possibly happen. This is a, uh, it's a really super nice restaurant pub style um, thing you got set up here, which, you know, like I said before, we didn't even notice that, we didn't even like expect that coming in here because it's kind of an industrial park. Sure. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of deceiving from the outside, but you come in here, it's very warm, it's very welcoming, a lot of copper, a lot of brass, it looks, it looks awesome. Yeah, we what? got a little tool, oh, I'm sorry, what? I think we do a pretty good job of uh, exceeding people's expectations when they come into this crappy little industrial park, <laughs> and they're like, uh, is someone gonna ditch my body here, or are we gonna have a good time? But, maybe both. <laughs> maybe both. <laughs> but yeah, we've, uh, you know, we did a renovation two years ago, and there was a lot of heart and soul in the old layout, mm -hmm. but there wasn't a whole lot of investment, I'll be honest about that. You know, we, uh, we opened up on uh, shoestring budget, as do most breweries, and uh, 
about three years ago, we hit this glorious bubble where we actually didn't have to invest multiple million dollars in the brewing operations. And so Ron and I sat back and we said, it's time to put some love into the restaurant. And uh, so we dressed it up. It's obviously still quite industrial. Oh yeah, but, it's got, uh, it, it really works though, the industrial feel to it. And I'm glad you caught the copper and the wood. Those are just sort of like the warming elements. Right. And we got a tour earlier of the, the brewery in the back. Right. Um, which is awesome. My, I think my favorite part of it, though, was going into the hop freezer. The hop freezer, yeah. I was going there and it was like, <laughs> wow. Right. It was awesome. It's sort of like a uh, centerfold from High Times Magazine, but, <laughs> exactly. but totally legal. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great place, and I'm, I was happy to take you guys in there because that's part of the victory experience that not everyone gets. But uh, being that room is just so, so visceral, so pungent. Oh, yeah. And you were saying uh, it used to be owned by um, Boo? This whole facility actually was owned by uh, Pepperidge Farm Bakeries. Right. And so we're sitting in a place where they used to make uh, goldfish, Milano cookies. Oh, right on. In fact, the black and white photographs on the wall, you'll have to check them out. They were all taken in 1953 uh -huh. of operations at that time. And the very last one is a picture of Milano wafers going through the chocolate <laughs> coating belt. That's so awesome. there's a belt of liquid chocolate. Yeah, I cool. just happen to be a big fan of Milano cookies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be drinking the uh, Whirlwind Whip Beer today. It's very light, very crisp. Very tasty. Sessionable beer. Yeah, I love that we're, we're hearing a lot more of that word these days, sessionable. Yeah, sessionable, yes. Uh, I'm not sure that our uh, elementary school English teachers are happy that we're all saying sessionable, but <laughs> exactly. you know, that's okay. They, they guided us into these careers, didn't that's they? Right, so they right. got to take what they, they got. They drove us to drink, so they, they get what they get. <laughs> yeah, we brought that up before about how sessionable beers are, they seem to be making a, becoming more popular this sure. year, at least online. You know, mm -hmm. People talking about that, because not that big beers are anything bad or anything, but it's almost like that was yesterday's trend. Yeah, um, big beers aren't losing any traction by any means, but I feel that um, you know, in the pursuit of something always different, like so many beer consumers are on that quest, uh, lower gravity but full flavored beers can be different if you've right. added double IPA. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I, I think people are realizing too that they, when they, they're getting more people together, they're getting more of these like sort of group gatherings together, and when you have all that high gravity beer, if you can't really is enjoy as much time with everybody drinking and whatever because right. it's everybody gets so jacked up that they can't drive home, they can't do whatever. Yeah. And so it's it's nice to have a good full flavored sessionable beer that you can enjoy and you know not not like a light lager mm -hmm. or whatever. But so I, this is and this is phenomenal. I really yeah, like this a lot. Well, it's a it's a mere five percent alcohol by volume. It's a uh, spring and summer seasonal that we've been doing now for gosh probably seven or eight or nine years now. Wow. Um, it's a little bit fuller middle than some wit beers. There's some delicious ones out there. I'm a big fan of, uh, of Rob's uh, Allagash White, oh, for yeah. instance. Absolutely. Um, but whereas that one is so cleansing and so refreshing, this one has the citrus, but it also has a slightly fuller middle to it as well. And uh, we, you know, here we are at the end of March and this beer is already out. So this is, this is typical for us. We like to lead into the spring fairly early with this one. What kind of distribution are you trying to, are you going to be getting more of your beers out to us in the West Coast or? Well, um, we That's just- That's more of a plea than a question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit here and say no and see if they beat no. me. Go away. Uh, yes, no, you're done. Sorry, buddy. I'll send you back with a six pack, be quiet. Um, <laughs> We intend to, but you know, in, in any situation, you have to work with your wholesaler, you have right. to fit their portfolio, you have to fit their opportunities as they're talking to their taverns and their, their retailers. Uh, fortunately, in Southern California, the persons we're talking about is Stone Brewing Company. They're our wholesaler. So oh, you know okay. that those guys completely embrace diversity. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're working on laying out all of the Victory products in a manner that they can handle. And it's because already it sounds like the consumer can handle more. Oh, yeah. So uh, we'll let the consumer voice speak and get some more things flowing that way. But typically, my director of sales, Steve, loves to work on the strategy of build core brands and then let more seasonals flow through. Right so um, it's, a, it's a step by step process, I guess. Now, you were recently out at Stone yeah. um, doing the, the collaboration that stays on the buff. Yes. And um, oddly enough, in the last five days, we've sat with Greg, Sam, and you, and yeah, talked. So we brought up yeah, the Saison de Buff quite a bit, but um, I was yeah, I was there for the, the Meet the Brewer session, and um, tasted the wort, 
very phenomenal Saison. Um, it's looking shape, forward to getting it in a bottle. It's shaping up really nicely, and, and you know, that goes to show you that even though Sam and Greg and I seem like you know nice, mild-mannered guys, we're actually really pulling the strings of everything that's happening. So that's why you encounter us all the time. <laughs> exactly. You, know, you exactly. really don't, there's, there's no free will here. We're driving <laughs> we you We will tell you what yes. to drink, and you will love us for it. That's, not the case at all, but yes, Cezanne Dubuff, uh, the three of us actually did a little event together that was uh, very poorly attended in 2003. It was a little manifesto for Buff, the concept of Brewers United for the Freedom of Flavor, and uh, rather than let it die, we decided to eventually turn that into a beer, maybe a series of beer, and uh, we were happy to finally get that underway with a Cezanne, awesome. um, and uh, it's got some herbs to it as well. Some were fresh, freshly cut rosemary, or as Greg likes to say, a state-grown rosemary from Stone Brewing Company. So we're having a lot of fun with it. That's awesome. How many different beers do you have available in this area? Uh, or well, that you brew. We, we keep 20 taps here at our facility active at all times and four hand pumps. So the hand pumps often cross over into the ale. So really at any given time you walk in here and you can expect to find about 22 different beers. Wow. And uh, All victory beers. Right. Okay. All victory beers. Our licensing in Pennsylvania doesn't allow us, well to the license we have, we're not allowed to have sell guest beers, buy okay. and sell them. So um, okay. as you would understand if you toured Downingtown a little bit more, there's not a whole lot to do here. <laughs> so we make our own fun here. Right, at exactly. We brew uh, fun here. We so. brew fun. <laughs> and you know, that actually gets sort of back to your question, like, well, why aren't we sharing all this stuff with the entire world? And some of it comes down to logistics, right. um, not only working through distribution, but uh, labeling, brand registration of all these things. You know, a lot of these things on the board are one-offs or maybe one that reoccur every couple years. So you can look at the beers that we serve here at our brew pub as, um, some of them, I should say, as a research and development opportunity chance for us to experiment and have fun in the brew house, live out our get sort of, feedback from the customer. and right. get the feedback from the customers, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we've, we've, had a, we've had a complete blast just driving around the area, and, you know, Fredericks, Maryland with the Flying, flying Dog, dog. And, yeah, yeah that, was, that was insane, and, and again, that was another one that just totally blew me away, did not expect to find what I found when I got there, got you know, because out in the West Coast, we don't really get a sense of how big yeah. you guys are, all what you you're doing. All you see is a bottle know? of beer, you know, you don't, you don't see all the stuff that goes into it, and right. the and people, I, the facilities, everything, like, we're walking through the brewery, and I'm like, this place is huge, <laughs> right. it, it, yeah. wow. Well, and I think we're, we're spoiled in one degree, because we have, like, in San Diego, on the 78, there's like 30-some breweries. Yeah. Spread along. It's like this like row of breweries. and But they're all super tiny. They don't fit like in this room we're sitting in right now. Got it. And yeah. so we kind of get that mentality sometimes where it's like, oh, this is what all breweries are like. They're all little tiny operations that are just right. kind of exactly. pumping out bottles by hand and whatever. And you walk into a place like this, and you're like, wow, somebody that's huge, somebody that's big like this can still produce quality craft beer. It doesn't take any of the, the human, like, artwork out of it you know it's still gotcha. just getting like you're still getting that craft feeling even though you're a big you know producing a lot of beers that's great I'm glad you've had that gotten that perspective from this trip and uh, very enthusiastically you know promoting it to the audience because it's it's true every every brewery is going to have its own identity and then every region is essentially going to have a certain vibe of its own and uh, I think that uh, Competition, in a very positive sense, drives that brewing community to do certain things, to achieve certain goals. Uh, Pennsylvania is a good example of like why, why do we have so many great pilsners in Pennsylvania? Right. And I think part of it is you know we do have a long-standing Germanic lager brewing tradition. I think the other thing is we have a bunch of craft brewers that care about that style, and they're you know we're constantly sort of pushing one another right. to keep the keep the level. Of uh, standard very high in that within that style. You said you've been around for uh, 14, 14 years, years as of yeah. February. Yeah. Okay. So you've got a lot of history in this area. Uh, what what do you see for your future? Uh, we, we were talking about this before we got on camera, and um, you know you were asking about our Strange Ways Pub Ale, which is yeah. a low gravity, uh, nitrogenated beer. I wouldn't say that that in particular is our future, but I think the important thing, to, the, the important takeaway is, you know, looking at our beer menu, we've got um, we've got three right now that are on that are 3.7 percent ABV. So by no means is Victory trying to say, ah, big is done and it's all about small, flavorful beers instead. But 
at the same time, running a restaurant as we do, there is a lot of families that come in here and they're not necessarily looking for a mind-expanding beer experience. Right. They're looking for a solid, tasty beer. You know, at home they might be drinking Miller Lite, but here they're not even going to think about that. Yeah. So they want something that's, you know, flavorful but well integrated. And so I think that to really get to the meat of your, your question, I think that we as a craft brewer have an opportunity to address an audience that almost seems unattainable to right. most brewers. I was going to say, even though Miller and Coors and all, and they make a really watered down kind of light mm -hmm. beer, people do like it. And you need to compete with they that. They outsell us. Mean you have to compromise your standards. Yeah. But having beers that you know are well crafted, but still are are a good you know gateway bridge beer to yeah. craft beer is really important. right. And and I'm glad you recognize that. I mean, it's not our mission by any means, but they are customers, and they're coming in the door. And you know, don't get me wrong. It's not like we're just trying to brew something for someone else right all of the beers that we brew are really part of our identity oh. and it's pretzel time pretzel time Woo! thanks Abel. thank you and the fun keeps arriving Ooh. yes so you know the best part of the brew pub ron and i enjoy these beers as well so i'm not saying that we're just capitalizing on an opportunity oh wow that's a big, all right so yeah we've got steak there we've got boneless lamb actually let me get some of this going for you guys. Wow. On potatoes with a pomegranate uh, barbecue sauce. Wow. That and I'm, amazing. I'm thinking it's going to go well with our whirlwind. Okay. The shrimp are called Pencil Tucky Shrimp. That Tucky is, shrimp. Uh, awesome. <laughs> that is a, uh, a green pepper aioli. Okay. And uh, the pretzels lemon. are just straight up great pretzels. Uh, yeah, that's all they I look can amazing. say. And this seems to be a big uh, trend in the craft beer community as well, is having high-end food, not as opposed to like, come in and have a pizza with your Victory Beer kind of wow. thing. Yeah, um, you know, I guess... This the, is really good, the salt and the pretzel. Okay, uh -huh. there we go, we're off to a good start. I guess the idea there is, you know, if you're gonna survive as a brew pub, um, you can't really pull it off by saying, well, we just do beer really well. Right. If you want, if you want ambiance, if you want good service, if you want anything else, you know, go somewhere else. A little bit of, Oops. thank you very much. Flip the lamb. Um, so I guess it's driven by sort of the, the, the whole business side of things, where if, if you're going to do it, you got to do it well. Exactly. Um, the other thing too, and I just touched upon this a moment ago, I mean, you know, there's a little bit of personal in any operation. We as, as owners and operators, Ron and I, want to, when we drink our beer, we'd like to have it with some really good food, you know? So no. it's a little bit selfish as well. I'm going to reach over you. So this is smoked lamb. Thank you. And I'm getting tired of sawing lamb, so I'm going to give you a giant chunk there. <laughs> so yeah, we have a hickory smoker, and that's how we smoke this uh, this lamb. It's tender, and, kind of uh, with a fork kind of thing. Oh, that is really good. Any impressions on the uh, pencil tucky shrimp in the whirlwind? Shrimp's great. I, yeah, it really mixes well with that. And I'll, what's the, is that uh, like a tartar sauce? It's a green pepper aioli, green so pepper aioli, mayonnaise right, base and uh, green pepper. That works really well with this, yeah. It's very bold, spicy. Then, all of this seems to work really well with this. This beer just it either kind of like refreshes you after the the spiciness, or it, it, it but it's complimented at the same time. You get a lot of the spicy notes off the beer with that, and a lot of the flavor comes out of the beer with it. Lamb is often tough um, to to work into to work with beer because of its innate sort of you know meatiness. Um, the lamb works really well with this beer. Yeah. That's what I think. I think wow. that there's enough subtle earthiness to the coriander mm -hmm. and the wheat malt that um, I thought this would probably pull it off pretty well. That's really good with the beer. Yeah. You get a very family feel with this, with your establishment here. Like, you know, if I brought my kids in here, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable or think that I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on. Mm -hmm. But the food is very a very gourmet level. So it's almost like you hit a great balance there with giving that warm, family-friendly feel, right. with, but still providing a meal that's amazing. This is a huge restaurant. I, I heard mean, a, a great story a couple weeks ago of a guy that uh, was became a fan of our beers through the typical, you know, uh, beer advocate, uh, mm -hmm. rate beer circles and forums, right. and he lived out in Michigan, and uh, he got transferred to a job uh, just west of Downingtown, and he settled just outside of Downingtown. 
and he was meeting his neighbors and asking about places to go for, for dinner, and somebody said, well, you should check out Victory Brewing Company. And he, had, he had been drinking our beers back in Michigan, had no idea physically where we were located, mm -hmm. and it turns out he had moved 10 minutes away. He was wow. like, he was wow. so elated. Was like, it was like awesome. the happiest, you know, the happiest error that ever occurred. Uh-huh. <laughs> We really appreciate you opening the doors to us and letting us come in and sprawl out and take up some area and yeah, meet you and talk to you. And um, I think you're doing a great thing for the craft beer community. I, you know, you've been around for a long time. You're one of the one of the original founders, so to speak. I guess, yeah. You know, I mean, the, the pioneers, as it were. And so, you know, I say thank you. I know we I say thank you. I have a whole new appreciation for your beer. Okay. Yeah, being here. And we're only a, a beer into it. That's all right. It's <laughs> yeah. going to be a good evening. Don't worry. We'll be, we'll be appreciating more of your beers in a few minutes. <laughs> oh, yes. So, oh, yes. but I, I plan to appreciate that growler filler. Oh, That's yeah. Amazing, by the way. Oh, yeah. It's this That's... Uh, industrial push button thing. You just press the button, door closes, fills up the growler. Oh, yeah. And I saw you, a video on that on YouTube. It was yeah. like, oh, that's pretty cool. I think uh, Tim and Amy did that show for here for yeah, the year. They did the whole thing for that. And I'll, we'll include a link to that in the show notes. We appreciate you letting us come in here. And totally welcome. Thank you very much. And as always, my time. stay safe and drink, drink beer. Drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody drink. Yeah.